A few hundred million years after the Big Bang, it was as if a cosmic light switch had been turned on. The first stars and galaxies started to blast radiation throughout the universe, and it changed the very nature of the matter that filled it. I want to understand how that happened. My name is Alexandra Lerest. I am originally from a small coastal town in Brittany, France. When we were in ninth grade, we learned that one could predict the movement of the planets with very simple equations, and that blew my mind. I thought, that's it. That's what I want to do. I want to be an astrophysicist. After my studies in Toulouse, I moved to Stockholm to start a PhD at the Oscar Klein Center and the Astronomy Department in Stockholm University. A part of my work is to try to understand a dramatic period in the universe called the Epoch of Reionization. During that time, the first stars and galaxies blasted so much radiation in the universe that they started to ionize the hydrogen that filled the cosmos. This happened extremely fast compared to the age of the universe. It took more time for multicellular life to form on Earth after Earth had been formed than for galaxies to reionize the universe. But exactly how reionization happened is not fully understood yet. The first stars and galaxies produced strong ultraviolet radiation that could rip the electron away from the proton inside the hydrogen atom. But similarly to the way the atmosphere around the Earth absorbs the ultraviolet radiation from the Sun, the hydrogen gas within galaxies themselves prevents the strong ultraviolet rays from stars to escape into the cosmos. So the problem is this. How could the radiation ionize all the hydrogen in the universe if it could not leave the galaxies in which it was created? This was the mystery that I wanted to solve. I started looking for galaxies around us that emit strong ultraviolet radiation in order to understand how this radiation can escape them. And I found the perfect candidate. It's a galaxy that is called HAR11. It is a galaxy that is located about 300 million light years away from us. It is the closest galaxy that emits strong ultraviolet radiation, so it's a fantastic laboratory to investigate conditions similar to those during the epoch of reionization. No one had ever mapped the neutral hydrogen gas in a galaxy emitting strong ultraviolet radiation directly before. Now we had a chance to do it thanks to the Meerkat telescope in South Africa, one of the most powerful radio telescopes on Earth. It was really thrilling to see the first image of Harrow 11 with Meerkat. We opened the data and it was just so much was there. When Meerkat observed Harrow 11, we had a sort of a surprise. We found that all of the gas sat towards one side of the galaxy, far away from its stars. We think this happened because Harrow 11 was formed during a collision between two galaxies. Galaxy collisions are extreme phenomena. They make everything happen all at once. As galaxies orbit each other, the gravitational forces both push part of the gas in the center, causing bursts of star formations that produce a lot of UV radiation, but they also eject part of the gas away from the stars. This creates perfect conditions for ultraviolet radiation to escape galaxies. It is expected that galaxy mergers such as the one that formed Harrow 11 were much more common in the past. For this reason, me and my colleagues believe that the process that is at play in HAR11 could have also been happening during the epoch of reionization. When I started my PhD, I would have never thought that I would get time on one of the best radio telescopes on the planet to work on my own project. And so the Oscar Klein Center and the Astronomy Department at Stockholm University provided a fantastic environment to develop as a researcher, to explore your own idea and to participate in collaborations. Thanks to this, I could take the next step in my career as a postdoc at the University of Minnesota in the US, where I continue to try to solve the mystery of the epoch of reionization.